So mastering your camera settings and learning about basic concepts like aperture, shutter speed, ISO is really important, but it's not the most important thing. The truth is that there's more important aspects to photography than the camera itself. Composition is a great example of this. Understanding how to compose a photograph is gonna help you produce stronger images, whether you're shooting with a DSLR, mirrorless camera, or an iPhone. In today's video, we're gonna cover some of the essential compositional techniques that you can use that's gonna improve your photography. Before we jump in, like, subscribe, and tap the bell to be notified of all future videos. Composition is all about what you want to include in your image and how you want to present it. So composing a photograph in a certain way is going to draw your viewer's eyes to a certain point in the image. One of the most popular compositional techniques that you've probably heard of is the rule of thirds. This is when you place your subject in one thirds of the image, keeping the other two mostly empty. Again, you can follow the rule of thirds or you can break the rule of thirds. But the fact is that there's actually some other compositional techniques that you can use to create a more balanced and aesthetic photograph. Framing and it's exactly what it sounds like. You're basically using elements in a scene to create a frame around your subject. And what happens when you put a frame around anything? It becomes more important. So framing is a technique that's used in photography and filmmaking. You've probably seen your favorite filmmakers use this a bunch of times, from Tarantino to the Coen brothers. In The Big Lebowski, there's a scene where the dude sees himself on the cover of Time Magazine. In kind of a funny way, the Coen brothers are telling us that the dude is the most important person. So using the framing technique is a great way to create context and to tell a greater story. You can use lines to draw attention to a specific point in your photograph. It's a great way to create a sense of depth in your image, along with leading your viewer's eyes to a specific point. Leading lines can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, you probably have leading lines in your own home. If you look at a staircase, a long hallway, a table, those are basically leading lines. So really just spend a moment to take in the whole scene and see if you can spot any lines to incorporate in your composition. So symmetry can be a powerful compositional tool because as humans, we're drawn to symmetry and balance. So a perfect example of this is a lake that's reflecting the landscape right above it. So that lake is cutting that image in half and reflecting exactly what's above it. And it's nearly identical. If you look at some filmmakers like Wes Anderson, he loves to use symmetry. He normally places his subjects directly in the middle of the frame. What this does is create balance within that frame. So you can use symmetry in a lot of different ways. So negative space in a photograph refers to areas in that image that are left mostly open. It could be things like a sky or a blank wall. What this is gonna do is make your subject stand out and allow you to create a deeper emotion within that photograph, like tranquility or maybe mystery. Negative space isn't always gonna work, but it's important to be familiar with the technique so that when the opportunity arises, you'll know exactly how to use it. So when you include contrasting elements in a photograph, you can create a stronger visual impact. So the most common type of contrast that you'll encounter in photography is tonal contrast, and color contrast. But you can also use texture and shapes to create contrast. And there's also conceptual contrast. And this comes in the form of ideas, and it's also a lot more subjective. A photograph of a high-rise building where you see poverty on the streets is an example of conceptual contrast. You're making a statement here. Patterns and repetition can be extremely eye-catching. You can turn something mundane into a work of art. And the funny thing is, we're surrounded by patterns and repetition all around us. We just never notice it. And it could be something as simple as rungs on a ladder. So if you take the photograph at the right angle, it can create a really striking image. They could be storage containers stacked on top of each other. That's patterns and repetition. You can really tell a bigger story here. You can also photograph brickwork or kitchen tiles. So patterns are all around us. Make sure to keep an eye out for any patterns and repetition that you can incorporate in your frame. Depth of field can change the composition in your image. So playing with the depth of field is gonna allow you to define the background and the foreground. And it's gonna dictate what the viewer is gonna focus on. For example, if you're photographing a subject in a really chaotic environment, Using a shallow depth of field is gonna allow you to blur out the background and keep your subject in focus. 
That way the viewer's eyes are gonna go to the subject, not so much the background. On the flip side, you might wanna emphasize the chaotic environment, use a deeper depth of field like an F8 or F16. It ultimately comes down to what story you wanna tell in your image. Shadows in photography can be used to employ some of the compositional techniques that we spoke about earlier. So you can add things like depth, texture, contrast. So what you're doing is emphasizing these techniques with the use of shadows. So shadows are great for adding drama and mystery and really drawing the attention to a specific point in that photograph. Just ask yourself, where's the light coming from and how can you use this to your advantage? You might notice sunlight just pouring through the shutters and creating a really interesting pattern on a person's face. You might even notice really strong and harsh lighting coming from a window that would be perfect for shooting silhouettes. So the whole idea here is that you have a really good understanding of all these different techniques and then find a way to combine them. And so you might look at a scene thinking, okay, I can use depth of field with symmetry and patterns and repetition. And there is no right or wrong way to approach this. The whole idea is that you're experimenting with different techniques and combining them. If you found this video helpful, like, subscribe, and tap the bell to be notified of all future videos. We'll see you next time.